the weather sucks. How can I ride when the weather's terrible outside? Well, what's the old saying? There's no such thing as bad weather, just the wrong clothes. You need three things to make your mountain biking happen when the weather sucks. The correct clothing, yes, that old saying. You also need to think about the bike in the same way. The correct kit will alleviate a lot of the pain the weather can throw at you. You also need one other thing, motivation. I'm gonna help you with all three, correct clothing, correct kit, and motivation. Combined, these three points will make any weather front seem like an opportunity to ride. Correct clothing. First, let's start with the basics. Make sure you have layers of clothing. This is such an easy thing to do, but so easily missed too. So take a long, hard look at your wardrobe and ask yourself, do these items of winter clothing mesh together to create the wind, rain, and elemental protection I need? but with the freedom to move and ride. Do they allow me to remove layers and still have the same weather beating performance, but more breathability? Get the layers working, something light and thin as a base layer, then build over that with a long sleeve breathable top. For me, this is usually my GMBN race top or something like that. Over that, a zip top that has some breathability and wind and rain resistance, but not too cumbersome and definitely not heavy. Then lastly, a more durable and substantial top layer coat that is loose enough to sit over everything else but not limit your movement. It also helps to have top two layers that can be zipped away into their own pocket bags just in case the weather improves and you need to cool down. It also helps if these top two layers can be zipped away into their own pocket bags just in case the weather improves and you need to cool down. Whilst we're on the clothing, let's talk about brightness. The winter months mean the evenings are shorter, so wearing something with a bit of brightness is always a good thing. Next, think about pockets. Riding in bad weather requires lots of pockets. There's more to carry in tough conditions, so wearing the correct clothes also means lots of options for storage, and it's a great idea, making life a lot easier once you're out on the trail. Now, here's a hack. Gloves are obviously a very important item, however sometimes it's so cold that your fingers start to freeze up and riding becomes really difficult and at times a bit joyless. I've been riding in some amazing places that cold hands ruined. Once you've lost feeling in them fingers, everything else gets a bit loose on the trail. So to help that situation, in one of those pockets I've mentioned, put a pair of latex medical gloves. These things under a normal pair of gloves make a huge difference to how warm your hands will stay. They're super lightweight so you'll never know they're there until you need them and suddenly the cold can't penetrate your defences. Stick a pair in your pocket, it's a great hack. The correct kit. Lights, camera, action. Yep, first things first, invest in some lights. In fact, invest in many lights. The more the lights, the better. Well, hang on, don't go crazy, but do think about both a light for the front of your bike and the rear for visibility. Also think about upgrading that visibility light at the front into something that can illuminate the trail, opening up a world of night riding joy. A helmet light at the same time makes this even more of an option. The winter months can be tough, but enjoyment of a night ride is not to be underestimated. Give it a go. Now, another correct kit must. Tires are something we talk about a lot here on GMBN. The crappy weather is where all the spend and effort of choosing the correct tire is gonna pay dividends. Grip is something that you can't live without, so understanding your terrain and conditions is very important. It means you can decide on a tire that will fit these conditions and dramatically improve your ability to ride with confidence. One of the places you will notice the difference is in braking. It feels amazing when you have a great front tire. You put on the anchors and that tire bites in and stops you with a definite grip and predictability. It's so good. Now these days mud guards come in many shapes and sizes. They're all great and we have some perfect examples in the GMBN store actually. Whatever mud guard design you think works best is up to you. The one thing no one will argue is whether they're worth getting. 
Mud guards will transform your ability to handle the slop. Back in the early 90s, a guy called Pete Tompkins, a good friend of mine, developed the first real MTB mudguard, the Crud Catcher, and MTBs have looked cool in the mud ever since. Here's my correct gear hack. Nothing matters more than having some nutrition on board to keep you sustained. So fill another pocket with a couple of power bars or gels. Having that fuel on board will be a massive help, but that's not the hack. Why not invest in a bottle cage flask that can carry hot drinks as well as cold? Then choose a great moment on your ride to stop and have a hot cup of tea or coffee or even a soup and enjoy the view. Nothing will spur you along and up the climbs than the thought of a warm cuppa and a slice of cake. Well, if you can fit the cake in your pocket, of course. Motivation. Okay, the tough bit is actually getting yourself out there in the cold. Everything I mentioned will work, but only once you're using it. You have to put a foot out the door first, so motivation is key to making everything happen. Now, there are techniques like visualization that will be helpful, imagining how great the riding will be and how glorious you'll feel once you've completed the ride. And I absolutely would say, and do do that myself. However, I'm still struggling sometimes, trying to stop the excuses and the procrastination, get in the way of what could be a really decent ride, even in the worst weather. Here's a couple of ways to encourage a positive response to conquering those niggling excuses. Tell a friend about the ride you're going to go on. This is a form of calling yourself out. Once you've told that friend in a very enthusiastic way that you'll be riding tomorrow, come rain or shine, then it's a big factor when the moment actually comes and you've got to go out and do it. Even better, call yourself out on social media. This is really hard to backtrack on. You've written it down, a schedule for a ride that everyone has seen. All your followers are expecting pictures. That will seriously make you do it when the time comes. The last hack that in this case will help motivate is this, plan for when you finish the ride. A reward like that can be the spur that gets you out the door, knowing that when you get back, you can dive into that special Thai green curry, that donut, that giant burrito, or a huge bowl of spaghetti and meatballs. No matter what your go-to treat is, allow yourself to indulge after a tough winter ride. It will motivate you now, and it will motivate you next time once you realize the prize of your choosing is there for the taking after that next big winter ride. So there you go, the right clothing, the right kit, and the motivation. Now you've got it all, so don't let that wet winter weather stop you from getting out and riding. And to tell you what, share this on social media, give it a love and a like so everyone can see it, and also get out riding when it's tough. Make sure you subscribe to GMBN and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, hopefully after you've been out on a great big epic.